What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about a couple different ways that you can do a sun and shadow analysis of a model inside of SketchUp. Um, so this is a request that came from one of my students inside of the SketchUp Essentials community. One of the cool things about that community is not only do you get access to live coaching calls where you can come in and ask your questions, you can also ask questions on the forum and get answered as well. So if you're looking for a new way to learn SketchUp, Make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash community. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the easiest way to do this, and let's go ahead and bring a model in from the 3D warehouse. We'll use this solar house by Paul Wall. I've used this for a lot of different things, actually. This is a pretty cool model. But we're going to go ahead and bring this model in from the 3D warehouse. Well, if you remember, SketchUp has an engine built into it that allows you to simulate the way that the sun would move and where shadows would be inside of your model, right? But right now, if we were to turn on the shadows, you have no way of knowing if they're realistic or not, right? If the sun's in the right place. Like, you can definitely go into the shadows tab and change the time, but you have no way of knowing if your model is located in the right position or anything like that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a location because when you bring in a location, what it does is it associates the proper um, location with your model. So let's uh, we're going to go up to the location or the add location function inside of this top toolbar. If you don't see that, you can right click and click on location. And we're just going to bring in some location. So I'm going to bring something in in Parker, Colorado. Um, we'll just kind of pick an open space for right now. You can see how this allows us to bring in imagery as well as location data. So we're just going to click on the button for select region. Um, remember with the newer versions, there is the digital globe data or the near map data. The near map data is that ultra high resolution stuff that you have to pay extra for, but it gives you a lot better um, final image. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and go with the digital globe for right now. And I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. We don't want to make our, uh, we don't want to make our spot giant. So we're just going to click on import and that's going to import our site. Well then, what we can do is we can move our house model so that it actually aligns with where we think this is going to be in real life, right? So what this has done is this has brought this in and this has oriented all of the location settings so that they line up with your actual real world shadows. And so what we want to do is let's say this house was going to be placed maybe in the middle of this field over here, maybe up this road a little bit. So we'll go ahead and move this over here and let's say that our model was not going to face this direction, but instead it would face this direction. And so we know based on the image that was brought in that north is going to be this way. Um, so this is now aligned with real world lighting data. Well now, what we can do is when we use the shadows, this is actually simulating real world shadows of where the sun would be located, right? So I can drag this over here, um, in and out, other things like that. And so this is actually going to simulate what the sunlight would look like on this object um, at 2.58 p.m. Um, at zero or on 0821. So you can change the date and you can see how this is going to show you where the lighting is going to be, where your shadows are going to be cast other things like that. So this is a great feature to have to look at the way that your lighting is going to be set up. But there's also another tool you can download from the SketchUp Extension Warehouse that allows you to do a little bit more of an in-depth analysis. And so that tool is called Curic Sun. And you can download it by going into the Extension Warehouse and looking up the option for Curic Sun. You can see how there's this option right here. You can click on it and you can download and install that. So that did tell me when I downloaded and installed it that it wasn't compatible with, or that it hadn't been tested for compatibility with SketchUp 2020. Um, I downloaded it anyway and it seems to be working just fine. You can just click on the install button right here. Note that you might get some kind of weird results on it um, depending on your version. It's just not 100% signed off, but it seems to be working okay. And so the way that it works, and honestly, there's not a whole lot of documentation for this extension, so I'm still figuring some of it out. But you can see how you have, to start off, you have these four different options, right? You have show hide shadow, show sun, test day, and test hour. And then over here, you have a couple other options for setting center and setting sun. Well, what we want to do is we 
want to click on this second option. The first option just toggles your shadows on and off is all that it does. The second option is really where you can start making your changes. And so if we click on this, notice how what this does, and I have to zoom way out at the moment, what this does is this actually generates a dome showing you where the sun would be at different times. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make this a little bit smaller. So we're just gonna drag our dome size down like this. And so notice how right now our dome is not centered on our house. Well, we wanna center this on our house. So the way to do that is click on the button for set center and then click somewhere on our house. So right here, that ought to work good enough for right now. And so the first thing I wanna do is verify that my north is pointing in a direction that makes sense, right? Just kind of a quick sanity check in here. And if I look at this, we know that north is going to be this direction, and this is facing in that direction right here because we set up our location data. So this should be aligned okay. If you do need to adjust that, you can adjust your angle up here. So I'm not gonna touch the azimuth and the altitude. I believe those are being set automatically within the tool itself. Um, the dome size is going to allow you to adjust the size of the dome that's placed around here. And so what we wanna do is we wanna use this to get an idea of where the sun might be at different times inside of our model. And so we can do that using these time step functions. So what these time step functions do is they actually control and build out what's in this grid so that we can see where the sun might be. So for example, you can see how if I adjust this like this, you can see how this is building this out for the different months, right? So if I move this down, um, so it's between four and six, all you're gonna see is the possible locations of the sun between months four and six. So that would be between the months of April and June, right here. Then you can also adjust this with the different hours of the day. So notice how I can check and see where this is gonna be somewhere between like maybe noon and two o'clock. We can assume that the sun is gonna be somewhere in this grid. And so if you mouse over the different points, see how you can get this information in here. And note that these are backwards from a notation standpoint. So when you mouse over this, it looks like this is January 4th. Really, this is going to be um, April 1st. So this is actually 4-1, not 1-4. So on April 1st, the sun at 13 hours would be in this location. Um, on May 1st, the sun would be here. On June 1st, the sun would be here. So you can use this to actually check that and see where the sun would be in the real world. And so you can use this to build out a grid so that you can understand exactly where the sun would be at any of those times. And so actually, if you click, it'll actually move the sun to those points. So you can see how when I click on these different points, the sun is actually going where I want that to be. So I can see that on, let's say, June 22nd at 11 a.m., the sun should be located right here. And notice how your shadows are adjusting with this so you can actually see what the sun would look like. So if you were testing maybe at what point, um, if you had a driveway in here, um, if you were testing at what point the sun would actually hit this, you can actually use this to test that. So like for example, on March or on April 1st, at 8 a.m. If I click here, you can see how your driveway would actually be in shadow. So you can use this to do an actual study of your sun really easily. Then you can also save these settings. So you can do a view, animation, add scene. Then you can click on the button for update scene so that you can see those different times, right? Let's say you wanted to look at this here. Um, so this time you could add a new scene. You could click on update scene. You can even put times in here if you wanted to. So notice how when you click on this, this actually animates the transition and this is actually showing you where the sun would be at those times. So there's also a cool function over here which allows you to do a test day. So you can actually run this to test the day to see what the sun movement would look like the entire time. Now the one weird thing about this that I haven't quite been able to figure out is while this does go through and actually test your day like this and you can see what those shadows are gonna look like, I'm not 100% sure how to make it stop. So like right now, for example, I can click wherever I want to in here and notice how this isn't going away. I think you might be able to toggle back to your select tool. Yeah, so if you toggle back to your select tool, then that'll make that stop doing that. And then to get it back, you can just click on show sun. 
but you can use that to test the sunlight for an entire day to see where your shadows would be at different points. And notice how down here this shows you what time this is. So right now this is at 8 a.m. and it's just gonna go through an entire day and animate that out. Now, what you could do is you could set up a beginning of day and end of day scene and then animate that into a video if you wanted to. Uh, leave a comment down below if you don't know how to do that and I can help you out with that. But see how um, what this is doing is this is simulating the sunlight for an entire day inside of the month of April. So one other thing, you can also manually adjust the time in here by going into your shadows section. So notice how when you adjust the time and the date inside of your shadows section, this actually shows you where the sun is going to be based on the settings that you have. So if you want a specific time to see where the sun is going to be and also to check out how the shadows are going to look on your house, you can do that using these tools over here. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Um, if you're looking for a place where you can get some SketchUp training as well as getting your SketchUp questions answered, make sure you check out the SketchUp Essentials community. We've had some great live calls in there and also I'm in there answering questions in the community. So if you're looking for a little additional help as well as to learn more about how to use SketchUp, make sure to check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash community. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.